Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News Today starts now. The coronavirus shatters daily records for confirmed infections. Experts warning Americans that this winter will be one of the darkest periods in the nation's public health history. But there is hope on the horizon. We'll take a look inside the efforts to approve and distribute a vaccine. But first, a chilly start to our weekend here. And is tracking some dropping temperatures and some sunshine. If you take a look across the river there at downtown Detroit, courtesy of our Windsor cam. It's going to be a nice day, though. It really is. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, welcome to Local 4 News Today. It's 7 o'clock. I'm Grant Herms. And I'm Priya Mann. Thanks for joining us. So you want to, you're really into decorations. This is kind of your thing. This is my favorite time of year. And so we have just turned the inside of our apartment to like like Christmas throw up oh, in I there. Bet. Like it's it's great. We just helped one of our friends in our building. We had other, we have boxes and boxes of decorations that wait, are like wait, separate so I got by a color. Like it's a whole deal. I got a question for you though. When you're doing your Zoom interviews, like how do you position your camera, or are you leaving all the Christmas stuff up behind you? Oh no, it's definitely in the Zoom interviews. <laughs> oh yeah, we've we've moved our table that we use so we can see the tree and everything behind us. Well, you know it's a good balance. You're doing those hard-hitting political interviews, and then you've got like you know something festive behind you. It's a nice bit of cheer. Yeah. <laughs> and Andrew, we could all use that right now. Grant, we need a house tour. <laughs> yeah, come on by. <laughs> hey, great for decorating today. The weather is helping you out whether you're decorating inside or outdoors. If you're doing it outdoors, always be careful with those ladders, of course. But weather is helping you out with a light wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sure, it makes you feel colder, but certainly not as blustery as it could be for this time of year. And temperatures will be below average in the middle and upper 30s. So while it remains dry with a fair amount of sunshine, especially this morning, doesn't mean it doesn't feel like December or feel like winter. It certainly will for today. So just make sure you bundle up and always rem remember your masks before heading out outdoors 33 degrees at lunchtime we're on our way to 38 39 degrees for a high beautiful shot once again of downtown Detroit looking live from our Windsor cam hello to the folks over in southern Canada as well temperatures up one degree since last hour at 31 but it still feels like it's in the 20s with that brisk wind at around seven miles per hour a wind chill of 24 but we have something to look forward to not just the holiday but also increasing amounts of daylight Right now, the days are still getting shorter. The, day, the amount of daylight is still getting less, but it increases after the winter solstice, less than three weeks from today. We'll talk more about tomorrow's forecast and your seven-day forecast in minutes. All right, thank you, Andrew. Time now is 7.02 and turning our attention to the coronavirus. The CDC is now recommending people wear masks both indoors and outdoors at all times except when they're at home. The new universal mask wearing recommendation is the strongest mask guidance yet and comes after the U.S. saw its deadliest day of the pandemic on Friday with more than 3,100 Americans dead from the virus. Here in Michigan, time is running out on the governor's three week pause as it's supposed to come to an end this coming Tuesday. The big question now, will she extend it? Meantime, we are expecting new coronavirus case numbers this afternoon. The state reported 8,689 new cases of COVID-19 along with 81 more deaths. And despite the grim forecast for the coronavirus, we are closer than ever to vaccine approval and distribution. The timeline for when all Americans may be vaccinated is somewhat complicated, but there are some key steps coming in the next coming weeks before Christmas. Karen Kaifa is in Washington with a look at what's ahead. When encouraging Americans to hunker down and take the proper precautions during this dire winter stretch, public health officials are also reminding help is on the way. The stage is set for the first coronavirus vaccines to be administered here in the U.S. in the coming weeks. Here are some key things to watch. This upcoming Thursday, December 10th, the FDA's Vaccine Advisory Committee is set to meet to consider emergency use authorization of Pfizer and BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccine. The United Kingdom approved this vaccine for their use and they'll begin administering jabs starting Monday. The following Thursday, December 17th, the same FDA panel will meet to discuss Moderna's vaccine. The FDA says it could take days or weeks to review the committee recommendations and ask questions, but the government's Operation Warp Speed has promised to start delivering vaccines within 24 hours of the FDA sign off. So in theory, two vaccines could be going into the arms of Americans before Christmas, as both Pfizer and Moderna were making millions of doses as they tested their vaccines. 
On Tuesday, a CDC advisory panel voted to recommend that frontline health care workers and long term care home residents be the first in line to receive vaccines, a so called phase one group that could be vaccinated in December and into January. Now to get American people more comfortable with the idea of the vaccines, former President Obama, Bush and Clinton have volunteered to get theirs on camera. And on Friday, HHS rolled out the first ads of a $250 million vaccine awareness ad campaign. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. All right, thanks, Karen. The first shipment of COVID-19 vaccines may fall short of expectations. That's the message the CDC is sharing with health officials across the country. The agency lets states know how many doses will be in the initial uh, shipment. It looks like it won't be enough to fully vaccinate the people designated as a top priority. And as Karen mentioned, a CDC panel recommended health care workers and nursing home residents receive the first shots. They add up to about 24 million people. And federal officials estimate about 40 million vaccines will be available if the FDA approves Moderna's and Pfizer's vaccines. Each person needs two doses to be fully vaccinated, meaning that's only enough for 20 million people. And as we talk about vaccines, top infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci is sharing his knowledge on immunity, as well as that second dose we keep hearing about. What you have is you get some degree, not optimal, but some degree of immunity a couple of weeks after the first dose. That's not optimal. After the second dose, you get optimal immunity anywhere from seven to 10 days after the second dose. Even if you are vaccinated, you may be protected against getting sick, but you may not necessarily be protected against getting infection. So you may have some virus in your nasal pharynx. It wouldn't bother you. And maybe it wouldn't even infect anybody else, but it could be there. That's the reason why you can't abandon all public health measures. And in case you missed it, Dr. Fauci has accepted a position as chief medical advisor for President-elect Joe Biden. Closer to home, Governor Whitmer is asking state lawmakers to approve $300 million in spending. That money would help the state distribute vaccines, as well as assist the state with what's needed to effectively fight COVID-19. This request is in addition to the governor's previous ask of $100 million in direct aid to people and businesses hurt by the pandemic. In the meantime, in D.C., a stalemate is giving way to optimism over a new COVID relief bill focusing on a $900 billion bipartisan compromise that includes money for small businesses and unemployment, but no stimulus checks. As the weekend begins, some optimism in the stock market. The unemployment rate dropped from 6.9 to 6.7 percent, but a dire jobs report was released Friday and record-breaking COVID cases nationwide, creating a sense of urgency over a potential stimulus bill. There is momentum uh, with the action that the senators and House members in a bipartisan way have taken with them. The bill could include a halt on evictions, more money for the Paycheck Protection Program, and $16 billion for a COVID vaccine and distribution, amongst other measures. Good afternoon, folks. President-elect Joe Biden says he's optimistic lawmakers will act soon, but also stressed the grim consequences if they don't. 12 million Americans will lose their unemployment benefits they rely on. Merry Christmas. The unemployment benefits allowing them to keep food on the table, to keep the lights on and the heat on, pay their bills. But another $1,200 stimulus check might be out of the question for Republican lawmakers trying to keep the cost of the bill below $1 trillion. We'll be able to look at this and say, OK, maybe a detail or two more to work out. But we've moved beyond a framework into kind of a fleshed out. We anticipate having that ready. While speaking Friday, President-elect Biden said he believes another round of coronavirus stimulus checks for U.S. families may still be in play. But he did not comment on specific details, nor whether he's talked to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Federal student loans programs are suspended through January 31st. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos announced the extension late Friday. This means interest rates on the loans will stay at zero percent. Borrowers will not be expected to make payments through the end of January. DeVos cited the ongoing coronavirus pandemic as a reason for the temporary extension. The forbearance period was set to expire at the end of this month. 
And big news out of Washington, a judge orders the Trump administration to restore DACA. The Obama era program was meant to shield undocumented immigrants who came to the U.S. as kids from future deportation. President Trump tried to end the program back in September of 2017. Well, late Friday, a federal judge ruled the program must be fully reinstated and that the Department of Homeland Security website must begin to accept new applicants by Monday. And the U.S. House approves a bill that would decriminalize marijuana. The Democratic-led House is the first chamber of Congress to vote on the issue. The bill passed along party lines but is not expected to pass the Republican-led Senate, which is where it's headed next. The MORE Act would remove marijuana from the federal list of controlled substances. It would also clear the way to erase non-violent federal marijuana convictions. In Michigan, recreational marijuana became legal in 2018. Well, we're gearing up for a beautiful weekend on tap. You know, Andrew, you know, I was a little curious, though, how this weekend temperature wise ranks. You know, are we on average? Are we a little bit above, below? Well, yesterday was absolutely gorgeous. We made it up to 46 degrees. Gorgeous temperature wise, even with the clouds overhead. Today, we get a little more sun. The temperature's a little lower, below average. How far below average? What about tomorrow? What about the next seven days? Do we get back above average? More on that in your seven day forecast coming right up. All right, thanks, Andrew, plus orange barrel alert. We'll take a look at construction projects around town that may impact your weekend plans. Keep it here.